Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm gonna to make a little water cooling station for my single board computers and in the process, I'm gonna test it on the Raspberry Pi 3. I got a lot of single board computers, a lot of Android TVs and mini PCs that I've always wanted to try to water cool. The first question I'm gonna get is why? And my answer is because we can. The first thing you're gonna need is a water block. Now this is a very small water block by Alpha Cool. I'll leave links in the description for everything I have here. I got it all on Amazon. Now this was relatively cheap compared to some kits out there. Some kits go for 180 bucks. As you can see, the little Alpha Cool water block fits right on the CPU of the Raspberry Pi. I'll be attaching the water block to the Raspberry Pi CPU using thermal adhesive tape. You could always use Arctic Silver or something like that, and it might drop the temps one or two degrees, but I need a lot of this stuff because I'm gonna be experimenting with all of my single board computers, so I'm gonna use the thermal adhesive tape. Got a radiator, a fan, and a small 12 volt pump with a reservoir attached. This is made by Syscool. They're really cheap on Amazon and they work great. I've already tested it out. I went ahead and clipped the connector off because I'm not gonna be needing it for this project. It does have the reservoir built in and this is one of the main reasons I got this pump. It also came with some screws, some clamps, and a vibration dampener. I got some hose for the water block, some hose for the radiator and the pump, some zip ties, some adapters to adapt the bigger lines to the smaller lines, and a 12 volt power supply. I'm gonna be using an adjustable buck converter to control the pump and the fan. Unfortunately, this one is not working out of the box. It's set at 11.6 volts, but I cannot adjust it no matter what I do. So I do have another one coming, but 11.6 volts will be fine for this video. Unfortunately, this isn't gonna be a build video. I just wanted to show you the parts that I'm using. I'm not gonna be showing you how to build this. If you get all these parts in front of you and you still can't figure it out, then you probably need to send the stuff back. Last thing I have here is an old wooden crate. This is gonna be my platform to mount everything to because in the future, I'm not gonna be just using this for the Raspberry Pi. Like I mentioned, I have so many single board computers, Android boxes, and mini PCs that I wanna test this with. I'm gonna go ahead and throw everything together and I'll show you what it looks like. So here it is. I'll get some close up pictures in a second, but right now I'm testing the Raspberry Pi 3. I'm running an extreme temperature test. Now what this is going to do is max out all the cores at 100% for 10 minutes and give me 40 temperature readings. It's going to log them in a file, then I can put them in a little chart and show you no heat sink versus the flirt case versus the water test. Here's a close up of the setup I have here. I did put some little standoff so I could set the Raspberry Pi on top of it. Here's a close up of the pump slash reservoir and the radiator itself. It's really easy to set one of these up. I'm just using zip ties on everything because there's not enough pressure to blow these lines off and I'm not really worried about if these electronics get wet or not. It's a $35 single board computer. The radiator fan and the pump are running off one 12 volt, one amp power supply that I just plug into the wall. It's run into the buck converter. And like I mentioned, the buck converter is not working so it's only set at 11.6 volts. I originally planned to come down to five volts and that would reduce the noise of the pump and the fan. And I was also gonna do some testing at like five volts up to 12 volts to see if it affected cooling any. But I'm set at 11.6, so this is what I got right now. All of that is plumbed into the CPU block. This is the nickel plated version and I'm using distilled water. If you use some type of cooling liquid that costs about $30, you will not see a performance gain. So in the description, I'm gonna leave the original log file. It will be a text file. You can go ahead and read over it. It's 40 temperature logs in 10 minutes. And I'll also leave the script for the test I use down below. I really can't stress this enough. This test is an extreme test. For a full 10 minutes, it stresses the CPU at 100%. It also creates eight software threads. So it's really kicking the CPU's butt. So there's a good chance if you're just doing everyday things with the Raspberry Pi, you'll never see the highest temperature here in the log file in real life. And here's the results. The very last one is the water test. The lowest temperature was 37 degrees Celsius or 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. The highest temperature we saw was 53.7 degrees Celsius or 128 degrees Fahrenheit. The very first test I ran was no heat sink. The lowest temperature was 45.1 degrees Celsius and the highest was 82.7. With no heat sink in the first four minutes of this test, the CPU started to throttle and bring the speed back to cool the CPU off. In the middle, we have the flirt case. 
lowest temperature 39.2 and the highest temperature was 65 degrees celsius so the flirt case handles this test perfectly you will not notice any performance gain going to water cooling and i wanted to really stress that to you guys that the colder your cpu is you won't gain more performance the only way you're going to gain performance is if your CPU is throttling because it's getting too hot in the first place. All of these tests were conducted with the stock CPU speeds, but in the future I want to check this water cooling out on some overclocking. I can go up to 1.4 GHz on most of my pies with the Flirt case without overheating, and I can guarantee you that this water cooler will keep it cooler than the Flirt case, but I won't see a performance gain. This is just something I've been interested in, and the reason I did it was because I wanted to. I'll be testing more single board computers like the Odroid XU4 and the C2 with this cooling kit here. If you guys are interested in building one of these little cooling setups, I'm gonna leave all the links in the description minus the wood crate that I have. This thing was really old, I don't even know where it came from, but I got everything else from Amazon. If you guys could, hit that like button to subscribe, and like always, thanks for watching.